I'm back. I'm back. I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. RFG is back at it, and I'm here today to relay the true information regarding the deity that we all know as Medusa. Okay. Now, on the books, you know, mainstream um, Greek mythology has it that the goddess uh, Medusa. Okay. She is supposedly one of the daughters of uh, Zeus, and she's depicted as a monster, okay? Greek mythology depicts her as a monster with um, serpents coming out of her head, uh, really angry, um, you know what I'm saying, evil face, you see? And, you know, they say that she turns men to stone. You see, but what a lot of people don't understand, overstand, is that, you know, the Greek society, the etymology of Greek means backwards. So what happened with Greece was they were given information um, that was falsified, okay? And that was done on purpose. That was done on purpose after uh, Alexandria was burned down, okay? The Greeks got mostly backwards information um, out of Kemet, okay? Because when you look at Greek mythology, this deity right here was depicted basically as a demon, you know what I'm saying? As a demon. And we all know the Greeks and the so-called, you know, European societies, they vilified the serpent, you see? In the Bible, the Bible uh, vilified the serpent, you see? So if we look at if we look at this shit from a Christian, um, Hebrew, you know what I'm saying, uh, mainstream perspective, we're automatically going to be programmed to think that this deity is evil, you see, you see, but you know, RFG, this channel, like I said, this channel is to undo the mindfuck, it is to undo society's mindfuck that it has casted over the world. Because like I said before, everything that's been put in our face to represent evil actually means good. Everything that's put in our face um, to represent good really represents evil. Okay, the Zionist warlocks have flipped our world upside down. And God damn it, RFG is here to flip it back right side up. Okay, now what I want you to do, I want you to look at. This uh, this girl's hair, this woman's hair. Okay, look at her hair and look how that looks to you. Okay, now I want you to imagine if you've never seen this woman before, or if you or if you were somebody from a different culture, okay, with different hair than this, and you've never seen this woman before. How would you describe this hair? You see, how would you describe that hair? Look at it from a different person's perspective, a different group of people's, a different culture's perspective. Okay, how would you describe this hair? You see? You see? Look. Look, they said she had hair that resembled serpents, that resembled angry serpents. So let's look at this. Let's look at these dreadlocks right here. Let's look at these curled dreadlocks right here. Okay? You don't see a resemblance? You don't see a resemblance? You see? You see the angry serpents are are nothing but curled dreadlocks, folks. Okay? Medusa was one of the original Nagas. Let me repeat. Medusa was one of the original Nagas um, that inhabited this earth. And she was one of the keepers of certain interdimensional portals over this earth. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and prove that because the etymology of Medusa means guardian. All right, a genus name from Medusa, the name of one of three gor uh, gorgons with uh, snakes for hair, whose glance turned to stone whomever looked upon it. Okay, her name is from Greek, um, Medusa, literally guardian. You see, it means guardian. She had two other sisters and it says that they all had snakes for hair the snakes that's nothing but a depiction 
of thick dread dreadlocks that are curled, that are curled up. Okay? It's not a joke, folks. So she's the, the guardian. What is she the guardian of? She's the guardian of different interdimensional portals. Okay? Three, she's the guardian over three different dimensions. And you see, the Greeks could only depict that as Medusa being the guardian of the dead. You see? They viewed, they viewed death in a completely different light, a completely different aspect um, than the original cultures on the earth. Okay? When you look at Medusa right here, you see that she's half woman, half serpent. She has the arrow. She has snakes for hair. Okay? She was a Nagas. The Nagas, okay, had dreadlocks. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, your Predator movie... Your Predator movie series is that I already decoded. They gave the Predator dreadlocks, didn't they? Okay? Because the Predator symbolizes the Nagas, the Nagini. So they gave the Predator a serpent face. Okay? The Predator's mask. Look at the Predator's mask. It's serpent. It's serpent-like. And they gave him dreadlocks. Right here you have Medusa. She has the serpent body with the uh, serpent hair. But the serpent hair represents the dreadlocks. Okay? Because she is a depiction of the original Nagas. Medu and I just want to put this out there. Medusa was a real deity. Okay? I'm going to put this out there. Medusa was a real deity. The Nagas really exist. Okay? And we and every person on the earth has a piece of the Nagas genome in our DNA. Okay? I just want to make that clear and put that out there. You know, for everybody calling this shit pseudo, um, you know, you're going to be looking really funny at the end of this, uh, at the end of this video. Okay? So, like I said, Medusa was worshipped first in the Amazon. She was an Amazon Amazonian goddess. And she was worshipped as the, um, the goddess that protected the realm of the afterlife, the realm of the dead. Basically, the third, fourth and fifth dimensions, okay, and, and her enemy, her enemy in reality uh, was uh, Father Time, okay, her enemy was Kronos, her enemy was Saturn, you see, so I'm about to, I'm about to do some showing and proving, okay, now right here, right here in this, in this article it says most people when they hear the name Medusa, um, they instantly visualize a scary snake monster with a face so terrifying that just one glance will turn a man to stone. What only few people realize is that, yet again, what, we, what we're seeing here is a twisting of the truth by he uh, Hellenic or classical Greeks. Medusa's origins lie in North Africa, where she represented one-third of the triple moon goddess. In pre-dynastic Egypt, she was known as Neith, and in Libya, Medusa's homeland, the triple moon goddess was called Anatha, okay? So, in Kemet, they called her Neith, and in Libya here, okay, they called Medusa Anatha, you see? You see? And uh, I'm about to show you Medusa's true original name at the end of this um, lecture, Okay, but I just wanted to give you that synopsis real quick. Um, basically, the theology of Medusa turning men to stone, that's because the goddess Medusa was so physically beautiful that she caused um, her suitors to just stand and just be in awe, okay, at her beauty, at her physical appearance. They would, they would basically be lured into a trance due to her physical beauty, her physical awe. Okay, that's where we get the theology of men turning to stone. Okay, they were mesmerized. They were put into a trance. Okay, so we're going to get this individual's synopsis of who Medusa really was. The sovereign female wisdom. In the Indian Sanskrit, it is called Meta. In Greece, Metis. In Egypt, it is Met Am Maat. Medusa was really a gift imported to Greece from Africa, where she was worshipped by the Amazons as their serpent goddess, Medusa, Metis, 
was the destroyer aspect of the great triple goddess, also called Neith, Anith, Athene, or Athena, in North Africa, and Athena in 1400 B.C. Minoan Crete. In her images, her dreadlocks, while pointing to her African origin, resembles cobras. This African goddess has been much maligned by the Greek myth that conveys the general information we have inherited about her. She appears to have been worshipped in Africa before being acculturated in some of the other cultures about the Mediterranean, such as Italy and Spain. Here's what scholar Norma Lori Green has to say about this African goddess, priestess, Queen Medusa. I quote, Medusa was so remarkable for her person that the black god Poseidon fell in love with her. She wore hair entwined with royal serpents like the heads of Egyptian queens and high priestesses. High crowned with rows of raised cobras, heads adorned over the third eye with a glaring uraeus. Unquote. That's taken from priestesses. Norma Laura Goodrich, page 176. Medusa rivaled Athena in beauty and power and became her enemy. Perseus is said to have surrendered to her beauty while she was dead, which provides a reason why he took her head with him to show the Greeks. However, it was the goddess Athena who was responsible for culturally transforming Medusa into a mythological monster and depicting Medusa's image as hideous. According to the Metamorphosis of Orbit, while Medusa was a virgin, the black god Poseidon raped her in Athena's temple. Athena, however, placed all the blame on Medusa, who was the victim of this sacrilegious act, and punished her by culturally depicting her loveless feature and storehouse of power, her dreadlocked hair, as snakes. I quote, the Greeks were not entirely sure why the remarkable beauty of Medusa, who enthralled Poseidon, was metamorphed into what they considered hideousness. Round face, protruding tongue, flared nostrils, glaring eyes, black curls entwined with serpents. Unquote. That's taken from priestesses by the same author, Norma Laura Greenwich, page 176. My own opinion about the appearance of Medusa's hair is based on the hairstyle of many persons of African descent, notably those of the West Indies, is that the cobras were really dreadlocks. The Rasta men, members of the religious community who worship a living black god, let their hair grow without allowing the razor to cut it until it becomes entangled and matted into dreadlocks. These locks resemble entwined cobras. Medusa, quite simply, was an African goddess whose dreadlocks were her life force and power. After Perseus beheaded Medusa, he departed the Atlas Mountains and notices another African priestess, Andromeda, chained to a rock and he rescues her. Consequently, this Perseus is responsible for transporting two African priestesses to Europe. Priests and priestesses are normally repositories of their people's religious traditions and rituals. Thank you. So that's basically his synopsis on who Medusa really is. Um, I want to let everyone know that Medusa was living on this earth um, when the male sex didn't exist. As we all know, males and um, males have X chromosome and a Y chromosome. Females have two X chromosomes. Okay, at that time, uh, females were reproducing asexually through a process called parthenogenesis. Okay, very very deep information. Um, right here, you see people think that this is impossible. But RFG is here to tell you that it's very possible, folks. Okay? Right here. You see? And when you study this, you'll see that it's also possible in humans. 
And what a lot of people don't gra can't grasp is people on this earth were put on this earth to be sales. Okay, so do the sale. We're, we're we are sales on the earth. You see, we are sales on the earth on the bigger organ. And the first sales that were put on the earth were the first beings. You see, the first humans, the first beings. So the first humans divided asexually just like the cells do in our body let me repeat we are cells okay on god's cell known as the earth so you know the cells in our body they divide asexually the you know the cells in our body folks they divide asexually you don't see a cell going up to another cell and having sex with the cell you know fertilizing another cell to produce another sale. No, the sales divide by themselves. So guess what? When the original when the original beings were placed on this earth, okay, they were female. They were female. They were female, uh, a warrior class species, and they reproduced asexually, just like the sales in our body. Okay, just like the cells in our body, just like the plants. And if you don't think females can reproduce um, asexually, just look up parthenogenesis. Uh, the sun, the sunlight basically is used to uh, activate the sperm and the bone marrow. Okay, the original beings on earth had sperm uh, located in their, in their bone marrow. Okay, so right here, this is an article from CBS. Okay, virgin births claimed by 1% of the U.S. You can read this for yourself. This is, a, this is a real article, folks. It's called Parthenogenesis. Okay, there's a certain group of people, um, you know, that are still alive and they have partial DNA. They have partial piece of their DNA from the original beings, the original serpent gods or serpent goddesses on the earth. And the, the females that have that DNA in them, they're able to reproduce asexually, just like the original uh, goddesses on the earth. Okay? We were placed on this earth to be cells of the earth. Okay? Just like the cells in our body. The cells in our body divide asexually. They divide by themselves. So the original females that were put on this earth, they divided by themselves through parthenogenesis. And the sperm in their bone marrow was activated, okay, when they got sunlight, when they stood in the sunlight. The sun is a masculine, is a masculine astrological object. The moon is a feminine astrological object. Okay? So that's why the moon is associated with with females menstrual cycles the females menstrual cycles coincide directly with the moon's cycles right with the moon's phases and cycles you see you see the moon represents the feminine energy the sun is the masculine energy the sun is the uh impregnator and the moon cleanses okay has to do with the cleansing of the females eggs okay so right here you see the Nagas. These were the gods in ancient India, you see, that the ancient Indians worshipped. The Nagas, the Nagas, you see, the serpent gods from, from Sirius. So when we look at how these were depicted, okay, and we look at uh, Medusa, okay, it's, it's, a, it's a direct match. It's a direct match, folks. Now it gets even deeper, okay? Because we see who you know who the Nagas are, but the Nagas, um, these these were basically the minions of uh, Medusa, and Medusa's original name, right here, is Kanya Naga Naga Kanya. Okay, this is the real the real um, identity, the real identity. Of the goddess Medusa, okay, she had dreadlocks, okay, 
and um, her her old the oldest name that they have on record is Naga Kanya, and this is what she what she looks like. Okay, right here you can clearly see, you can clearly see with this phenotype. You you know what I'm saying that that's a uh, that's a melanated woman. Okay, and then right here, you know what I'm saying here's a here's a drawing. You see because they know Naga Kanya was a melanated woman. You see, so in Kemet. It looks like in Kemet, um, they ha they depicted her with wings. You see, they depicted uh, Neith Neith with wings, but they you know in Kemet they didn't depict her uh, with her serpent with her serpent body, but they depicted her with wings. But when you look at Nagakanya in East India. You see, they depicted her with not only the wings, but, you know, the serpent body as well. Okay, this is the original Medusa right here. And you look, you can clearly see that's a melanated woman. Clear as day. Okay, through the facial features. Through the facial features, you see the serpents on the head. Okay, and the serpents on the head started... Um, when o Oshun, okay, because this Medusa theology, um, it all goes back, you see, to this theology right here. You see, Oshun had a relationship with Olokun. Olokun is really Poseidon, Neptune. Okay, the Greeks and Romans called him Poseidon and Neptune. It's really Olokun and Oshun is the true Athena. Oshun is the true Athena. So Olokun was the individual who raped who raped uh Naga Kanya, okay, in Olokun's castle. And Oshun was under the impression that, you know, that sex was consensual. Um she, you know, Oshun didn't realize that Olokun raped uh Medusa. Okay? And because of this, Oshun grew jealous, and Oshun had statues made um, of Medusa. And instead of, you know, depicting her dreadlocks, um, Oshun made sure that the statues depicted um, snake hair, okay, instead of the dreadlocks. So, you know, the whole notion of the serpents coming out of the head, serpents coming out of Medusa's head, you know, that comes from Oshun. That comes from... That comes from the the uh, the jealous the jealous action, okay, of Oshun. Oshun thought that Olokun and Medusa had consensual sex. She didn't realize that Olokun uh, raped Medusa, okay, because Medusa was a virgin. Because Medusa was the was the original represented one of the original female species on the earth. And she produced asexually. That's think. Hello, folks. Time to wake up. Didn't it say on the books that Medusa was a virgin? Hello. That's because she could only produce asexually, just like the original females on the earth, just like the original Nagas on the earth. Okay, female Amazonian uh, warriors. And like I said, Medusa's real name is Naga Kanya. Okay. Right here. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Right in front of our faces. The, the serpents are a depiction of the dreadlocks. You see? Right here you have Kali. Um, you see? Another goddess that's tied to Vedic, uh, you know, Vedic theology. Okay. It's not a game, folks. It's not a game. Um, and this is for everyone who basically calls this pseudo. There is a a, a so-called disease called sireno sirenomelia. I want everybody to look this look this up. Sirenomelia. Sirenomelia is when babies are born with both of their legs uh, fused together, and not only are the legs fused together, uh, you're not able. You're not able to see the genitals at all, okay? And most of the time, okay, they don't even have feet. 
It's just like it's one giant like web. Okay, it's called Sirenomelia. Why is it called Sirenomelia? Because the original definition of siren is mermaid. Okay? So these particular babies, they inherited a gene from the original beings on the earth. Okay, right here. It's for everybody calling this pseudo. If this is if this is pseudo, where where are the genitals? On these babies okay not only folks not only are the legs fused together where are the genitals and we all know when we look at okay when we look at um, beings and deities like uh, Naga Kanya aka Medusa look we don't we don't see no genitals let's look at uh, let's look at Ola Kun. we don't see no genitals and you and, and folks, you think you think our ancestors built these statues for no reason like this? Y'all better wake up, man. You guys better wake up because uh, you know individuals like this. You see, mainstream biologists, mainstream scientists, you know they like to call shit like this genetic defects. I you know I beg to differ. I just believe that these individuals uh, inherited uh, a gene. From the original beings on the earth. Okay? Okay? You call you call me pseudo? You call it you call an RFG pseudo? Okay? If this was just the legs fusing together, okay, why the hell aren't the genitals outside of the outside of the legs? Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Like right here, I think that's the umbilical cord. A piece of the umbilical cord. No. The genitals. The genitals are not even outside. Of the damn. You know. Of, of the damn fin. Because that's what it is. That's what the hell it is. Okay. That's what happens when you call RFG pseudo. RFG nails your ass. With documented. Biological. Forensic. Evidence. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you know that right there basically sums up this lecture and you know to add fuel, you know what I'm saying, to the fire, you know what I'm saying, to add more nails in the coffin. This is how we all start out. You see, this is how our how our bodies, how our physical bodies all start out when we uh enter this earth, when we enter this third dimension. You see, let's look at the fish um embryo let's look at the fish fetus let's let's look at the salamander the tortoise fetus okay the uh the chicken fetus fetus the uh calf the cow fetus and the human fetus it's all the same folks it's basically all the same you know what that means that means that we were all genetically spliced into existence by the same beings okay by the same beings. That's why the Egyptians had animal heads on their gods. Because guess what? That was literal. Because that was literal. Genetic splicing on the earth is real. Okay? I'm shattering paradigms, man. That's really all I had to say on this topic. RFG is back. They can't hack me. Okay? They can't hack me anymore. They can't uh, try to silence me. They can't threaten me. They can't flag me. See what I'm saying? I'm out here shattering paradigms. But eventually, like I said, as this channel grows, they're going to refer to me as a cult leader. Going to refer to me as a cult leader. Mark my words. I appreciate everyone who supports RFG and Atlantean movement. Please like, share, and subscribe. It's the chosen one, man. I'm